Hey guys, welcome back into today's episode, episode number four. I want to say it's episode four. Let me double check this now because now it's going to tilt me if I don't know the answer to this question. It's episode number five of the Mount Rushmore's of Major League Baseball. Today we're going to head to the Windy City. No, I'm not talking about Florida, which is expecting a hurricane. Kind of like Monday-ish, I think, is what the weather says. I don't know. Uh, we're going to go to the Windy City. We're going to go to Chicago. We're going to talk about the... 2016 World Champion Chicago Cubs. We're going to talk about the Chicago White Sox, the AL and NL representative of the Windy City. Without any further ado, let's just hop right into it. We're going to start with the American League team. We're going to start with the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox are represented by four guys that, well, two of the four were absolute locks. The other two just felt like the right guys to go with after looking at the rest of their... Um, Available players to be put on, I guess is the best way to put it. We'll start with my honorable mentions for the White Sox. It is Mark Burley. It is Ted Lyons, Paul Canerco, Robin Ventura, and someone that's near and dear to the heart of many of the fat kids worldwide, Bobby Jenks. Yes, I know Bobby Jenks only had like one really good year. It was the year they won the World Series. But I'll never forget um, Ozzy Guillen with the, I need the righty that's really big, but the, the short, the, 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 the short fat guy. Um, so, uh, I'll always remember Ozzy for that, so I put Bobby Jenks as an honorable mention out of humor for the fat kid. So we'll get right into the Chicago White Sox, Mount Rushmore. First, we're going to talk about is Ed Walsh. Walsh, in 13 seasons as a member of the White Sox, had a career record of 195 wins, 125 losses, a career, a White Sox career ERA of 1.81. Um, it's not a lot of runs, guys. It's less than two runs a game. So um, that's a pretty ridiculous stat line. Uh, so kudos to Walsh there. 312 starts as a member of the White Sox. He had 249 complete games. He threw 2,946 and one-third innings pitched as a member of the White Sox, had over 1,700 career strikeouts, and had a whip of under one at .955. He had two second-place finishes in the Most Valuable Player Award. They didn't really have... A Cy Young Award, so they decided that hey, everyone's eligible for the same award, the MVP. Um, so Walsh never was fortunate enough to win the MVP, but he had finished second twice. I'm pretty sure he probably would have won a Cy Young Award somewhere in there if they had actually had that award back then. So kudos to Walsh there. The second member of the Chicago White Sox Mount Walsh Rushmore is Eddie Collins. Collins, in 12 seasons as a member of the White Sox, played in 1,670 games. He had 2,007 hits. He had 1,065 runs scored, 266 career doubles, 102 triples, 31 home runs. I'm going to tell you guys this right now. That'll be the lowest amount of home runs that anybody hits that's probably making any of these Mount Rushmores if I have anything to say about it. Um, Collins, on top of the 31 home runs, had 800, excuse me, 803 RBIs. He had a 331 batting average and a 423 on base percentage. He finished in the top five of the MVP race three times. Again, it was one of those things, no big awards other than the MVP, so it was really hard if you weren't the MVP to win any kind of award. Uh, so Collins fell into the same loop that Ed Walsh crawled into, as Carol's taking photos in the background that you guys can hear. Um, the third member of the Chicago White Sox that is going to be on the Mount Rushmore is going to be Luke Appling. Appling in 20 seasons as a member of the White Sox played in 2,422 career games. He had 2,749 hits. He had 1,319 runs scored, 440 doubles. He had 102 triples. He had 45 home runs. So the last two guys combined have had 76 home runs. Um, I don't think anybody's going to have less than that ever. I have the other six guys that I'm going to, five guys I'm going to talk about in this list all have over 100 home runs by themselves. So it's pretty interesting that we have two guys that have under 100 home runs on the Chicago White Sox, Mount Rushmore. Appling had 1,116 RBIs. He hit 310 and had a 399 on base percentage. He was a seven time All Star and had two second place MVP finishes. I think you're kind of finding the revolving door here about the Chicago White Sox as a entire, I don't know, team, organization. Um, really, really good at getting there, but can't get the job done. 
always finishing in the top one, two, three, four, but never being able to actually get the MVP award. Um, so, with that being said, another guy that does not have an award on here, uh, no all-star appearances, I don't think they had an all-star. Um, so, shocker there. And the final member of the Chicago White Sox Mount Rushmore is the Big Hurt, Frank Thomas. I think this one was the easiest one to put on my Mount Rushmore. I think he's a guy that absolutely embodies the Chicago White Sox as an organization. And I think that it just made a ton of sense to have Frank on this list. In 16 seasons as a member of the White Sox, he played in 1,959 career games. He had 2,136 hits. He had 1,327 runs scored. 447 doubles, 11 triples from the big guy, 448 career home runs, 1,465 RBIs, hit 307 and had a 427 on base percentage. He won the MVP twice. He had four other top five finishes, was a five-time All-Star, and a four-time Silver Slugger. Thomas rode between first base and DH towards the end of his career, but he was actually a really good defensive first baseman coming up in the Chicago White Sox organization. Thomas is a guy that I thought that I got to see play very, very uh, often on TV. And I always was just enthralled with his swing and the way that teams actually feared facing the Big Hurt. So I thought this was really simple to, in an easy way to put Frank Thomas on this one. He was the absolute lock for the Chicago White Sox. So again, my White Sox, Mount Rushmore, the lock, Frank Thomas, Eddie Collins, Luke Appling, and Ed Walsh. Um, Again, I don't know if necessarily there was a big, oh my God, why is this guy not here? Um, I think the only guy that you could make a legitimate argument for was really Ted Lyons and maybe Mark Burley. But I just felt like this was just uh, the top four guys of that organization so far. Um, they have some young guys there, or younger guys, I should say. Uh, Jose Abreu, uh, James McCann, um, Yon Mankata. That, that inevitably, if they stay there for the duration of their career, could possibly catch one of these guys in the top four and replace them. But I think these four guys are fairly safe for the next 15 or 20 years, at least in my mind, in the Chicago White Sox Mount Rushmore. So, with that being said, we're going to transition to the other side of Chicago. We're going to talk about the 2016 World Series champion Chicago Cubs. The Chicago Cubs, what can you say about them? They went a while without... Winning World Series, was salute through a temper tantrum after Steve Bartman supposedly cost him the World Series. Who knows? I don't know if they're actually going to win that game. That ball was well foul. But what do I know? I'm just some random kid that's sitting in front of a camera talking to you about YouTube stuff. What do I know? So, I live the dream. So we're going to go to the Chicago Cubs when they're Mount Rushmore. I'll start with the honorable mentions there. Uh, first up, Cap Anson. Um, he's probably one of the bigger... I don't know how I couldn't put him on this list, as well as Fergie Jenkins. He's not on my list. He's probably this. Him and, and Anson are probably the first two that I would have put on if I took anybody off. Billy Williams is also an honorable mention. Carlos Zambrano, who was a lot of fun growing up to watch him pitch. It was just entertaining. And last but not least, Mark Grace. The first baseman was a really, really, really good hitter. Um, he was very entertaining as well. Um, a lot of people remember Grace from his time in Arizona. I thought he was actually better for Chicago than he was Arizona, even though he won a world title with Arizona. So, that's me. So, we'll start now with the Mount Rushmore of the Chicago Cubs. And first up is a guy who, I'm not going to say doesn't get credit, but his credit is limited, um, and I don't think that's fair for what he did to help save baseball, and that is Sammy Sosa. Sosa, in 13 seasons as a member of the Cubs, played in 1,811 games, had 1,985 hits, 1,245 runs scored. He had 296 doubles, 32 triples, 545 home runs. He had 1,414 RBIs. He hit 284 and had a 358 on base percentage. See, Sammy Sosa doesn't get the credit that I feel he deserves because he's overshadowed by Bonds and McGuire. But with no Sammy Sosa, does Mark McGuire break the home run record? I don't know. Because it was the challenge and it was the chase that kept baseball so alive and active back in the 90s. When people wanted to give up on baseball, the the summer run of Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa kept people coming back for more. And I think a lot, I think it's a lot, a lot lost uh, on Sammy's behalf. So I feel like um, if you're going to be one of the people, and I am one of them that think 
that Mark McGuire helped save baseball in the 90s. You have to give credit to Sammy Sosa as well because without Sammy, who knows what McGuire does. So I, I'm one of the guys that I think Sammy Sosa helped save baseball in the 90s because they were going down a slope where they were going to become the fourth or fifth most popular sport in, in the United States. And they may be going that route now with this speed up the game, not let it be it. I, I, don't, I don't know. That's, that's a different argument for a different day and a different video. Um, but I will always love baseball, and I felt like that sometimes Sammy doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Sammy Sosa is a one-time MVP. He finished in the top five one other time, was a seven-time All-Star, and a six-time Silver Slugger as a member of the Chicago Cubs. The second member of the Chicago Cubs, Mount Rushmore, is an easy one for me to add on this list. It's Ryan Sandberg. Sandberg played 15 seasons in Chicago, played in 2,151 games. He had 2,385 hits. He had 1,316 runs scored. He had 403 doubles. He had 76 triples, 282 home runs. He had 1,061 RBIs, hit 285, had a 344 on base percentage. And he took off the 1995 or 1996 season and came back and played two more seasons afterwards. So kudos to Sandberg. I think he's a guy who may get overshadowed from time to time um, because of the position that he played. And there was a lot of good second basemen. Um, but I feel like Sandberg is just one of those guys that, like, when you think about the Chicago Cubs organization, you have to think of Ryan Sandberg. Sandberg has a one-time MVP. He had two top five finishes, ten-time All-Star, nine gold gloves, seven silver sluggers. Like I said, he was an integral piece of Chicago Cub baseball. Um, so Sandberg was the easy choice here. I've had two fairly easy choices, and now I'm going to give you, like I had with Frank Thomas, the guy who is the lock-in. The lock here for the Chicago Cubs, to me, is Mr. Cub himself. It is Ernie Banks. Banks played 19 seasons in Chicago. He played in 2,528 career games. He had 2,583 hits. He had 1,305 runs scored, 407 doubles. He had 90 triples, 512 long balls. He had 1,636 RBIs. He hit 274, had a 330 on base percentage. Two time MVP, two top five finishes, 11 time All Star, and one gold glove. The biggest drawback for Ernie Banks is that he never had the right to win a World Series ring. Um, these Cubs teams never were able to get over the hump, which is unfortunate because I think Ernie deserves it. And I think he's one of the guys who, um, in the Hall of Fame and, and that is retired, that it's unfortunate that those guys were unable to win him a ring because I think he deserves it, and I think he's a guy that really embodied the game of professional baseball. So I will always have a strong feeling towards Ernie Banks. The final member of the Chicago Cubs Hall of Fame could be a surprise to some, but I really don't think it should be. It is Ron Santos. Santos played 14 seasons with Chicago, played in 2,126 games, had 2,171 hits, 1,109 runs scored, he had 353 doubles. He had 66 triples, 337 home runs. He had 1,290 RBIs. He hit 279 and had a 366 on base percentage. He's a nine time All Star, had five gold gloves, and had two top five MVP finishes. If I was going to take anybody out of this Mount Rushmore to put Jenkins or Anson in, it probably would have been Santos. Um, just because, I mean, his stat line is really, really good. And I and I appreciate the, the gold gloves as well as the all-star appearances. Um, but I feel like that there are some other guys that have, may have done more and I may be missing. And I think Fergie deserves a lot of credit. Um, and there will probably be some of you on this that tell me, hey, you got that one wrong. It should have been Fergie over uh, Santos. But I just felt like adding him here just made a ton of sense. Um it's this is probably the hardest one I've had to do for a fourth person because I've gone back and forth between him, uh, Anson and Fergie. So like I, at the end of the day, I just sold on on Santos the fourteen years, the twenty six hundred games, the nine All Stars, the five Gold Gloves was really what kind of put it over the top for me. Um, but that one's hard. So to recap my Cubs, Mount Rushmore, Sosa, Sandberg, Banks, Santos. So my entire windy city. Um, as Carol's like giving me the bird in the background. Um, my entire winter, si windy city, Mount Rushmore, Thomas, Collins, Appling, and Walsh for the White Sox, Sandberg, Banks, Sosa, and Santos for the Cubs. So that's going to wrap up the windy city. 
We are going to head to the East Coast. And the next time you see me for a Mount Rushmore, we'll be a little fatter. I will have co-founder and one-third member of Fat Kid Certified Craig Horner with me as we're going to go to New York, New York. We're going to talk about his New York Yankees and the New York Metropolitans. That's going to be on the next episode of Mount Rushmore. Like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below. In the comments, tell me who you think should be on the Chicago Cubs and White Sox Mount Rushmores. Tell me what I got right. Tell me what I got wrong. I'm here for all the critics in the world. Follow me on Instagram at FatKidCertifiedSE, on Twitter at TheyCallMeBurn. I appreciate all of you guys for coming out. I appreciate you guys for giving me your time. But you know what? It's time for me to go get fat. So let's eat.